Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It is Friday morning, February. The, I'm sorry, September the 16th. I'm glad to be here. This is one show to be survivor to another. We're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com, and I'm just drinking some coffee. Waking up here. Um, chat room's open. I did pop the link in there. What we're looking at? Robert Bernie's web pages um, called Joy to Me and You. That's www.joyjoy the number two m e u dot com. And I was mainly interested in the heal, inner child healing work and stuff and looking at codependency and whatnot. So um, that's what we've been looking at for quite a while now. Robert Birdie is a codependence therapist. He's a grief counselor. He's an author. He's written a book called Codependence, The Dance of Wounded Souls. And um, it's a great book. And he's he's a spiritual teacher. And he's got a lot of good information there on his website. If you go to the site index, you can see like he's got it all categorized and, um, to different categories like relationship stuff and inner child healing work, codependency, boundaries, and all, all kinds of good stuff. So hopefully you'll check that out. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a private citizen paying to do my shows here on Blog Talk Radio. And, um, you know, this is my healing journey here in the morning, really. And, and hopefully it helps other people see that, you know, see see a process and sort of just to hold on and not give up. And, um, you know, some of the stuff, the material that I've found has been so helpful in my own journey. I just really wanted to, to share it. So thanks, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate it. And you know, I'm talking about abuse. It's a sensitive subject. You have to know what's good for you to listen to, and you have to know you know, what may trigger you. And if you're a survivor and you're just starting out on your healing journey, you may want to you want to be careful listening to stuff like this because um, it, it, it can trigger you and it can cause people to feel bad, and you, you don't want to regress in your healing journey. And if you're so you want to be you want to listen to all of my shows at your own discretion. Young people under the age of eighteen, I just ask that you have permission to listen to my shows. You know, have an adult listen to the show with you, and that way they can help you make a decision, like whether you should be listening or not, age appropriately, right? Because I have a, there's a lot of adult content on my shows. It's, my shows are not for younger children, even though it's all about stopping child abuse and whatnot. So we'll get right into this. And I'll, this morning we're looking at um, the sort of the last portion of this one. Web page from Robert Bernie called um, in, in Inner Child Healing: The Process of Processing, and we're about oh, three quarters of the way down the page there. And Robert Bernie, yesterday we were looking at at this this one part of it where he says um, he says um, the more we do our emotional healing, so that we are not taking life and other people so seriously and so seriously and personally, the less power we give to old reactions. The more we take the power away from the old tapes and, and old wounds, the less extreme our swings become. And like he was equating it to like swings of a pendulum, you know, back and forth from one extreme to the other. He says the more gentle our swings, the easier it is to maintain some equilibrium, some semblance of balance. Gentle swings is what we are looking for, and that can only come by being gentle with ourselves. So he says by getting in touch with and building on, uh, building an ongoing relationship with the different inner child places within us. We are able to recognize and respond more quick, quickly when we get triggered. When we get triggered, multiple old wounds can be triggered at the same time. It says the reopening of old wounds triggers old defenses to kick in so that the, the lonely, needy child reacts out of a deeply painful place, which triggers the older child, who had to get tough, to react with disdain and hatred for the needy part of self. And the eternal battle, the internal battle is often running, he says. So he says, the internal battle is what we are working to, to stop. This is where we need to manifest love for those wounded places within us, having compassion for ourselves, and forgiving ourselves on an emotional level for our powerlessness as children is the hardest thing for us to learn. And um, he goes through and he talks about that. He says, we are powerless out of ego self to do anything any differently than we did it. We are powerless out of ego self to heal this disease. Through spiritual self, through our spiritual connection, we have access to all the power of the universe. So he's talking here on a very spiritual level, but um, I like what he says. It's really about the same stuff that John Bradshaw is saying in his books, you know, Healing the Shame that Binds You, and I'm actually reading that one right now, and uh, really good stuff. You know, he says, we, we need to have the willingness willingness to get a new level of self-honest, to get to a level of new self-honesty. Willingness to start listening to the loving inner voice instead of the shaming ones. And willingness to face the terror of healing the emotional wounds. That's just the whole case. I mean, you know, this is what I'm always talking about as far as my healing journey goes. It's just a matter of being realistic, you know, looking at, instead of being in denial and just kind of being, you know, living in reality and saying, well, this happened, you know. and um, I can't really go back and change the past, but I can certainly learn how to change 
these dysfunctional, you know, distorted behaviors and, and ways of thinking of mine that I they're really not my fault. I was just brought up this way and learned how to behave a certain way in order to survive and in order to deal and I think, you know, like I, I have a lot of work to do to sort of correct a lot of this stuff, right? But I need to be compassionate for myself and not shaming and judging, right? I mean, I just need to, we all do, we need to be, you know, compassionate and good to ourselves, you know, um, and just realize we're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to, it's not our fault that all this stuff happened to us. We actually had no part. It not, wasn't our fault. Uh, we were just forced to endure what we had to endure. And, you know, people put that on us. That, and so we had to react a certain, we were going to react a certain way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not these are these are things that really are not our fault. So we do have to be kind to ourselves, you know, and we have to realize that that we just need to whatever our issues are, we just need to learn how to how to how to first of all reach out and get some help and then how to how to allow ourselves to work through some of this stuff, whether it's with you know, with group support or whatever we're doing. So that we can so that we're not allowing these old wounds to, to be so fresh, you know, because this is, you know, where I was four and a half years ago, I was still sitting on the couch wanting to self-injure and still planning my suicides. You know, that was about April 2007 is when I finally decided that, that was enough. I was like, how long am I going to have to live like this, you know? Like, how long are these wounds going to be so fresh that it hurts me so incredibly bad that, you know, throughout the, the year I'll have, you know, these issues um, facing me every 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 time something comes up or I'm feeling bad because I remember my past or I'll have flashbacks or dreams or memories, you know, intrusive thoughts and whatnot of my past and growing up abused, you know, how long am I going to have to suffer, you know? And I, four and a half years ago, April 2007, I actually made up my mind. I said, that's it, you know? <laughs> I, I, I need to heal. I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn how to, first of all, how to live how to and how to how to have a good life and how to enjoy myself because, you know, I mean, I've been working on it for a long time. And at the age of 41, I said, you know, how long am I going to have to suffer this? I, said, I don't, you know, it's not it's not healthy for somebody to to be going to work and coming home planning their suicides, you know. And I, I had been doing this my whole my whole life, you know, so periodically, not every day, but throughout my life, you know, periods of time, and just feeling so incredibly hurt and wounded, you know. And I thought, my God, I mean, you know, how am I going to how am I going to get through this? I can't keep going like this, you know. It's just too much. And it was too painful, you know. But I didn't. I also couldn't deny what happened to me because I'm not in denial. And so I was like, "How am I going to do this?" I thought, "Well, I'm going to have to get. I'm going to have to get help." <laughs> it's like, "Well, I, I can do that. Other people are getting help. I see other people getting help. Other people are doing this. There's no reason why I can't do it, you know." So that's where I came to this issue of becoming really honest with myself and saying, "Okay, you know, I need to work on some things." You know what I mean? And I still do. And I still have. A lot of self-sabotaging and things that people do, negative uh, belief systems, negative, you know, and a kind of distorted ways of thinking, really, that's not our fault. <laughs> and, you know, it's just like we, we have to learn how, some of it we don't even recognize. And now that I'm going through John Bradshaw's books, uh, mainly doing um, Healing the Shame that Binds You, and also I'm doing the Inner Child Healing book, uh, the Inner Child Workbook there that he's got, um, Reclaiming Your Inner Child Homecoming, it's called, Um I can see a lot of my distorted thinking patterns just because he's got a lot of stuff listed there that I'm like, wow, I do have some seriously distorted ways of thinking. And I, <laughs> it's no wonder I have trouble in relationships. You know what I mean? But um, it's it's hard. Yeah, it's very hard because none of that was my fault. You know, and yet who pays the price for it? Well, anybody who, who happens to enter into a relationship with, with me or or me. Right, and it's sad because I'm a I'm a good person. I don't I'm I'm not out to hurt people. I'm I, I, that's the last thing I would want to do. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and yet I I don't know why. I, it's just these inner wounded children running my life. You know what I mean? That are saying can't trust anybody. They're out to get us. These dysfunctional ways of thinking. You know, what what are their motives? Always questioning. Always because my inner children are are freaked out. Yeah, and it's no wonder. You know, and, and because I'm not in denial, it's like I look back and I think, well, it's no wonder I think the way that I do and feel the way that I do. And I just need to learn how to go and how to change these things and how to how to allow myself to heal from those wounds, first of all, because I never did. Um, just I just sort of split off at those moments and I got stuck in those moments as a child and as a young person, right? So, you know, I just need to learn how to work this through this stuff. So that's what he says. We have to have the willingness to face the terror of healing the emotional wounds because, you know, it, it's it's horrible. Like like uh, John Bradshaw in his book there, you know, he says, like, he wouldn't recommend anybody do the work, uh, inner child healing work on their own. 
he's like, because he, he, he has a thing there where, it's, you know, he has specific rules about it in his book. It's like, if you've ever been this, if you've done this, if you've been sexually abused and you've, you've never seen it, uh, had any professional help, all kinds of stuff. He's like, don't do this workbook on your own. Do it with a counselor, a therapist, or somebody else, group support. Now, I'm doing it on my own because <laughs> I trust myself so much more than I trust anybody else. But um, I have a friend of mine who's doing visualizations for me, Gypsy Witch, and she's doing visualizations with me, which is great. And that is helping. That actually has helped me a lot because it, it set up a safe place for my inner children, which is wonderful. And so, you know, they're not nearly as upset and, and as, as frightened as they were, these little inner parts of myself, you know. But um, John Bradshaw was like, you know, don't even think about doing the book on if you're if you're having uh, if you've been abused, like sexually abused and whatnot, and haven't had any any professional help. So even he he you know pe- people say you have to be very very careful what you're doing with this work. I have to plug my headphones in. I'll be right I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So yeah, the willingness to face the terror of healing the emotional wounds. That's about that's about it right there. It's not easy to do this work, and you know you have to be very careful when you start doing something like this because you do reach into this, you know, to the very place where you were wounded. And a lot of times, you know, you know whether that was your parents or somebody else, that's a painful place to go. You know, and in order to grieve the to grieve the wounds, to grieve to properly grieve them, because I mean, you know, children who are being abused are not allowed to grieve, obviously, uh, most likely. You know, what I mean, they're not allowed to even show any emotion about what what they're dealing with a lot of times, you know. And so we have to go back in and and according to the to the to these these people, these clinicians, you know, that that have written these books and talked about this stuff. There's actually quite a bit of information out there about it. Uh we have to go back and even Robert Bernie says we have to go back and learn how to do the grief work. Right. You have to be very careful when you're doing that grief work and you have to know that you can actually do it if you're gonna do it on your own. I know for sure that I can. So I'm all right. But I, I would never suggest anybody do that on their own. But he says, codependence causes us to have a distorted and repressed emotional process. And the only way out is through the feelings. So codependence gives us a scrambled mind, a reverse dysfunctional way of looking at ourselves in the world. And we have to be able to use the wonderful tool that our mind will, uh, that is our mind while changing our attitudes and reprogramming our thinking. So he says, it seems awfully complicated, doesn't it? That is because it is, he says. <laughs> Robert Brady, he's really cool. <clears throat> I like what he says. He's a survivor, too, and he's always talking about his own process. And he says, on another level, it is also very simple. It is a spiritual dis- disease, like dis- like a dis-ease. It can only be healed through a spiritual cure. It cannot be healed by lo- only looking at the symptoms. That is backwards. So he says, the cure is available through surrendering control to a higher power, we cannot do this healing by ourselves. We need a loving higher power in our lives. We need our other recovering people in our lives. This is Robert Bernie talking. He says, Com- complex and complicated is this dance of recovery. Multiple interrelated issues branching off into multiple intertwined levels. Some feelings that need to be trusted. Some cannot be trusted. A part of our mind that is the enemy. Most of our mind, a magnificent resource that we have hardly begun to tap. Twisting and, and convoluting is our inner journey often confusing and baffling, scary and frustrating, so easy to feel the victim of a somehow defective self. So he says, we are not defective. There is nothing shameful about being human. It is not only okay to be confused and scared. It is a normal, natural part of the human experience that is very, impor- it is very important to accept as a perfect part of the process. The less we judge and shame ourselves, the more quickly we get to move out of the painful places. And the more we align with how the healing process really works, the more control we have of our own inner process. So I like that. You know, it's like it's okay to be confused and scared. Well, because this part that's just just a human emotion, and there's just nothing wrong, um, you know, with being human. That's the whole issue. But so you know, so many so many of us who you know who may have experienced a lot of negative, um, you know, stuff from our from our childhoods, you know, may feel that you know we don't have room in our life for that kind of stuff. You know, there's no room for weakness. There's no room for neediness. There's no room for needing. And so then, of course, we aren't going to get our needs met, you know, because we're always going to say, oh, well, I shouldn't need that. You know, I should be tough. I should be able to handle that. Uh, what's wrong with me that I can't, you know? And then all and then before you know it, we're shaming ourselves again, right? It's just a whole cycle, um, you know, a whole lot of, of cyclical stuff going on. And 
So he says, we do not have to figure it out. We just need to learn to pay attention in a conscious way. And we need to be willing to learn how to be emotionally honest with ourselves so that we can get, can have a more balanced relationship with our own emotional process. And we need to learn to discern between the things we cannot control and the things we can have some control over so that we can start learning how to relax and enjoy the growth process we are experiencing. So, he says, recovery is not self-help, or at least not only self-help. He says, we need to do our part of the process and let go of trying to do our higher powers part. But we are not alone. We are being guided. We are being led to a new to new horizons. Our paths are unfolding perfectly. He says, one of the great gifts of aligning with the spiritual growth process is that we get to discover who we are in truth. As we learn to change our relationship with self and with life into one which allows us the possibility of opening up the unconditional love, we learn that we already exist in that state of grace. So this is where I, this is exciting to me. <laughs> to be able to say that, you know, that that eventually I'll be able to feel that I'm that I'm existing, that I'm already existing in a state of grace. You know what I mean? Um, it, I'm I'm looking forward to that feeling. I haven't quite got there yet. But I'm I'm hoping that you know it's that whole I am you know I am that that whole oneness thing, you know I'm still working on all that right, and um, you know I I just feel like yeah you know, I was just so wounded as a child spiritually uh, and in every way you know what I mean um, so you know I had I had issues with being even being alive you know what I mean and that my whole family did my fam- my my family suicidal my parents were suicidal um, you know my dad was suicidal. A real suicide, always trying to kill himself, and my mom was um, always talking about suicide. So it was always suicidal ideation. She wasn't planning her suicide. She was always talking about the fact that she should, that she should have killed herself, or she she should have died, or she should have she should have killed somebody else, or she should have killed me, or somebody. It was always a lot of death. She was always talking about death. And you know, yeah. So when I grew up, just feeling like I didn't, I wasn't, I, I really didn't belong here, you know, and that maybe I should have died. You know, and so, um, you know, I, I never really actually worked through any of that. So even today, you know, it's obvious that I know I belong here and I'm fine. And I can put myself on the back and say, you do belong here, I do belong here. It's a matter of my internal core believing that. I, I or, You know, I still have a lot of work, a lot of work to do. Um, but at least, you know, I mean, at least I understand it. <laughs> you know, I do understand that I do belong here and I am exactly where I'm supposed to be, right? But it's um, it's a matter of getting my small inner child to believe that, right? And so I so I have so many so much to work through, really. And um, Robert Bernie says, as we learn to remove the distortions, false beliefs, and lies from our intellectual paradigm, as we clear our emotional process of the twisted, polluted residue of judgment and shame, then we start to see ourselves more clearly. And uh, then we we start to see ourselves as we strip away the masks we learn to wear, remove the garbage and lies from our perspective of self. Uh, then we get to see the wonderful truth. We are exactly who we always wanted to be. Wow. Um, yeah, this is a really interesting. I know that in in John Bradshaw's book, he's talking a lot about that. These false egos, ego, false egos, really false people we created, um, and, and you know necessarily so in order to protect ourselves. But these false egos that we all, almost everybody, I would say, has, um, unless you you get unless you get, you get help. And you actually learn how to find your true self. Um, and this is really what I'm working on. So he says, we're exactly who we always wanted to be. A state of grace is a condition of being loved unconditionally by our Creator without having to earn that love. We are loved unconditionally by the Great Spirit. He says, what we need to do is learn to accept that state of grace. And so the way we do that is to change the attitudes and beliefs within us that tell us that we are not lovable. And we cannot do that without going through the black hole. And he says, the black hole that we need to surrender to traveling through is the black hole of our grief. And the journey within through our feelings is the journey to knowing that we are loved, that we are lovable. And he says, it is through willingness and acceptance, through surrender, trust, and faith, that we can begin to own the state of grace, which is our true condition. And we are all beautiful swans who exist in a state of grace, in a condition of being unconditionally loved. The dance of recovery is a process of learning to accept and integrate the truth of grace into our lives, and so that's just awesome, you know. Like, uh, you know, this is just it. Like, this is what I'm working on. And I finally decided, you know, because I got John Bradshaw's book there, it do it, it has a whole, um, you know, you can do the inner 
inner infant stuff. You can do the inner toddler, inner preschool child, inner school age child, inner adolescence. And you can go back and reclaim these, you know, and learn how to do anchoring work, which is really quite interesting. And I actually went and did my inner, I went and reclaimed my inner my inner infant um, last night. And this was a process that took me about five hours, really, to complete, because at first I had to read the material, you know. And then I had to record, um, in a little voice recorder, I had to record a meditation that's in John, John Bradshaw's book. And then I had to um, do, first I did some journaling, which they suggested do write your, I had to write my inner infant a little, like my own little self, a, a letter, and welcoming myself to the world and all this. And, and then I had to write a letter from my inner infant, and um, had to come from from my inside myself and and it's in with my uh, non dominant in hand right so just like most people have heard of this sort of stuff and it was really quite interesting what came out because I wasn't actually trying to force a you know a conversation to happen and it was really quite quite neat what actually came out of the little inner infant's mouth um, to write on the to write down on the paper and I'm just going to read that to you. Um, it's really quite cool when you start doing this work, but I would be careful doing it because, you know, if you're not, like they said, if you're not capable, you don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to regress back in your healing journey, you know. So you have to, and sometimes people get to these places where, you know, they think, oh, no, I'll be fine, I'll be fine doing some of this work, right? And then all of a sudden the grief becomes, the pain becomes too unbearable. And they didn't realize it, that they would even experience that level. And so you you might be caught off guard. You have to be really sure um, that you can do this work, you know what I mean? Uh, like I've pulled myself out of, out of depression and suicide, so like I know that I can do this work. But um, you know, you have to be very, very sure. Don't, I wouldn't suggest like even Robert Bernie. Nobody suggests that anybody does this on their own um, for sure. If if you're if you're not sure that you can do it. But I, I thought it was quite interesting. I, I wrote this little letter to my inner infant because in, in the book there it talks about whether or not you think you may have been neglected or abused or or wounded in infancy, right? And I just was going through all the questions, and there's a, set, a series of questions, and if you answered yes to, to, more, to more than you answered no to, then chances are there was some inner infant wounding going on. So I, they said, you know, write a little letter to your to your infant uh, self and just welcome them into the world, right? And so I did, and I said to you, my precious baby Lori, and then I wrote, I love you, baby Lori. I am so happy you were born and are a beautiful, healthy girl. I promise to take good care of you, to love you unconditionally. I promise to never leave you. I will always be with you and help you, comfort you. I will give you all the time you need to grow and grow up. I will be patient with you and treat you tenderly with respect and dignity. I know what your needs are and I'm fully capable of meeting them. I love you, my precious baby Lori. Welcome to the world. Big Lori. Then my little inner inner infant wrote back with my non-dominant hand. Hi, Big Lori. Can you help me? I need to be fed. Um... I need to be loved, I need to be wanted, I need to be held, rocked, burped, cleaned, fed, and kissed on top of my head. Before you came and got me, I was so scared and alone. Now I am with Blue Angel and she is good to me. Can you come and see me? Can you come and hold me too? I want you to come and hold me every day. Thank you, baby Lori. <laughs> that was my inner self talking to myself. It was really wild. Um, and then I said, yes, baby Lori, I will do that. I promise to do all of those things. I love you, my sweet baby Lori. So that was really quite interesting, very, very interesting. Um, you know, it's the inner child healing work. This is why I, I knew it was very important for me to do this because I needed to go back and get, touch, get in touch with myself at these points where I was wounded. And I think you, that's what I'm saying. You have to be careful doing it. It's almost better to have somebody around, somebody you trust, a, a counselor, therapist, if, or, or a really good friend. You know, my good friend, my... my you know, my, my soul sister, really, um, Gypsy Witch, has actually helped me do the visualizations and helped me create a safe place for my inner children and set it up, you know, so that it's safe and it's contained. And that has helped me out immensely. And so um, it's working for me, but I don't know if it would work for other people. I've actually heard from a few other survivors, which I won't name names, that it does work. It's worked for them. So then they had, you know, severe childhood abuse, right? So it does... I don't know if it doesn't work for everybody. I don't know. But I know that from the people that I've talked to that actually have done inner child healing work and the containment work and the visualizations and stuff, it has worked <clears throat> for them. So I don't know. You can always talk to your therapist or counselor or somebody about it. And I, I think it's really cool. Um, you know, he goes on to talk about he's the, the goal in this age of healing and joy is integration 
and balance to integrate the spiritual truth into our physical experience so that we can fill the whole inside and find wholeness within. As we integrate our true spiritual nature into our relationship with our physical being, we can begin to achieve some balance and harmony with and between all of the parts of our being. <clears throat> so he says, the age is, is a time for growing and learning, a time to become conscious of the true nature of the source energy, a time of spiritual awakening. We have been given the wonderful gift of having the ability and tools to start integrating the truth of a loving universal force into our day-to-day experience of life. And we now have the knowledge and guidance that we need to start be bringing some balance to our relationships with ourselves and our, and our, and our God or goddess, with other people and the planet. So we live in a way that allows us to experience some peace and love in our, on our life path. And we can heal our wounded souls enough to change the dance of life from a dance of endurance and suffering to a dance that celebrates living. We now have access to the power to transform the dance of codependence to a dance of healing and joy. And that's Robert Burney. Oh, man, that's just awesome stuff. You know, like he, he's awesome and his book is really good. My friend, my Gypsy Witch sent me the book, um, um, Codependence, The Dance of Wounded Souls, and it's awesome. It's an amazing book. And I really like what Robert Burney has to say, so I hope you will all go check out his stuff. You know, like it's just amazing. And, um, and I also like John Bradshaw's stuff too as well. He does talk about some spiritual stuff in his book too, but it's mainly, you know, just the process of how to do these inner child, how to do this inner child stuff and healing the shame that binds us. And it's all inter- intertwined. I got both books and I started working through both books at the same time. And I could see where there were sections that actually would help me get through from the very beginning of my inner infant all the way through um, to where I am today. So, I, you know, it's kind of like if you, you, you I'm using them as a dual workbook uh, because it's totally doable just to get it. But, but that's because of these people at my work gave me a gift certificate to give me to buy books for because uh, my contract was up and so they gave me a gift card and otherwise I was just not going to buy the books I was just going to wait you know because I don't have a job right now and in between jobs I'm on, I'm on uh, I normally do contract work and so I haven't found anything yet and so um, you know I wasn't going to buy the books you know but they gave me this gift card for working for them for six months and um, I went and bought these books with this gift card and so I now have the books and I'm telling you uh, and I have Robert Bernie's book, and I also have another book called Troubled Childhood, Triumphant Life by um, Healing from the Battle Scars of Youth by James P. Crabiel, um, EDS, LPC, and CCBT. He's, he's out of California. Troubled Childhood, Triumphant Life. Actually, there's this is a, almost like a workbook, too. There's some really good stuff in there as well. And so just with these four books here, you know, like I've really been able to do a lot of work, um, and especially, you know, now that I'm actually doing the work on my inner child healing, I'm actually just starting. Um, I've been looking at it for a long, long time, but I'm actually just now doing the process. And um, I can see that, you know, it is going to make a difference. It's going to make a huge difference. And um, so I think it's whatever we find that that helps us, you know, you have to look around and see what's good for you, you know, what works for you in your own process, right? Because we're all different. We all need different things and we all, and there's there's nothing wrong with that. That's what makes us unique and that makes everybody so special because we are unique. We do need different things and we are different people. <clears throat> now, you know, what works for me may not work for somebody else and what works for somebody else may not work for me, right? But we have to find out what what works for us, right? So I'll be back on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, next week I'm actually um, changing my show times. I'm going to be on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday for an hour instead of half an hour. So Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So I'll be on Tuesday morning. But I'll be on um, tomorrow. And also on Sunday, I have Lisa A. Freeman joining me. Sunday, Lisa A. Freeman from Abuse Bites. I hope you guys can be there for that show, 5 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, because um, she, she was uh, an abused uh, girl on the streets, runaway. And she and her dog Snickers, you know, they, they, they survived abuse, and they survived the streets. And they and she's has, she has a good life now, and she's, she's, um, she's the CEO and, and founder of Abuse Bites. And um, I hope you guys will check this out. It's a great website, all you know, to promote anti-violence and and to stop abuse and to, and to you know to help people out. Right? It's a great. They do um, public speaking tours and whatnot. They go into schools, and I hope that you will be here for that. And Lisa A. Freeman is going to have a blog talk show here on the Blog Talk Radio here pretty soon. So she's probably already setting up shows and everything. But it's just awesome of her to come on to be on my show. And so I appreciate that. So I hope that you guys will be here for that and uh, tune in Sunday at five o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And um and then, you know, I'll be I'll be back on like Tuesday morning. 
So thanks, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate it. You know, have a good day. And if you can't cope, you make sure you do the right thing. You get yourself some help. And if you have to, you call a crisis line. But you do not, you know, you don't ever give up. Not ever. It's not an option. Two of my brothers gave up. They killed themselves. I was ready to give up. I was ready to kill myself. Do not ever give up. It's just don't make it an option. Just make it a non-option because we need to fight to win this fight because other people are healing and other people are doing this. And I figure, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. And so why not? You know what I mean? I deserve to have a good life and so, and so do we all, you know? And so, you know, you take care of yourself and have a good weekend, everybody. And um, just be sure and be good and kind to yourself and be good to others as well. Have a good weekend. Talk to you soon.